But first, a special treat. We went behind the scenes with Lee Kesselman during Music Fridays at noon. The free weekly performance series hosted by the COD Music Department. We visited during the mid-semester student recital, and then we chatted with Lee about upcoming college music events. Let's take a look. For, for people who have never come to one, I really want them to understand what this is all about. Can you explain to someone who's never been what they could expect? Sure. We decided that it was really important for our music students to, to understand some of the things that happen in the music world besides the classroom itself. So we set up this program of every Friday at noon during the regular semesters, we would have something that, that some program that deals with music. We hold it in a classroom, we try to keep it fairly informal and we have events every Friday and what we found is that the community and the college community and the students themselves have found this to be a place to be on Fridays at noon. And so sometimes we have students performing, sometimes we have faculty performing, sometimes we have special guests who come and they either talk about the careers in music or the music business and uh, sometimes we, we, uh, uh, we bring in something completely out of out of all of those categories. Um, so guests and faculty and students, and among all those things, we get a little broader picture of what the music world is about. So sometimes we'll show a film, and sometimes we'll have someone come and talk about music therapy as a career. Um, our, some of our most special programs are when our students perform, we love that. And I've been to a couple where you've had alumni come back, and what's great, I thought, was then the students get to see, like, I could be that one day. That's you right, the, the alumni programs are also very special. Sometimes that's the time we really connect with our alumni and find out what they're doing. But for students at a community college, it can be really hard to see what the future looks like. It feels like, oh, that career is so far away. I'm a freshman in music theory class, and how does this actually happen? And when our alumni can come back and say, I was in your chair one day, I was singing in that choir, or I was playing in that band, and then I went to some other school and I got a degree and now I have a career in music. That just opens the whole world, not only for our students, but also for the faculty to, to reconnect and for community members who see the continuum from first year freshman through transferring to another school to possibly having a career in music. So, you know, I remember a couple weeks ago you had um, a quintet here, a Metropolis Quintet, and it was an oboe and cello, I think, and violin right. and bass. And, and I think it's important for students, faculty, and parents and others to see. I think when people think you're going to be a music major, you're going to be a singer or a performer, the end, or a teacher. Right. There are so many opportunities. You can compose, you can be a studio musician, you can teach, you can be a private teacher, you can organize orchestras. I think that is another value to this program, is for people to realize how rich and deep. I, I agree with you. I, I think one of the hardest things for students who are beginning their studies in music is to really get a picture for what this life might look like. Mm -hmm. And they've, maybe they've played in the high school band or the high school orchestra or sang in the high school choir. But that's such a small subset right. of what can really happen. So when we bring guests off and they perform or they might do a contemporary work or a new work so we get some insights for the com about the composer, um, when that happens, it opens a whole bunch of questions. And I find the days after we do that, my students are coming to me saying, so this Metropolis Oboe Quartet was here. How does that happen? Who are those people? Or you wrote this piece, mm -hmm. because they did a piece right. of mine. You wrote this piece for oboe and three strings. And what does that score look like? Can we, can we get a recording of that? And all of a sudden now we're talking about a whole bunch of other questions. And who do you have coming up this, the rest of the season that, that maybe you would want to point out? Like, hey, really look at this one. Well, we, we have, the programs vary so much. I'm going to go quickly through the ones okay. that we have. That on April 6th, we've got the movie Copying Beethoven with Ed Harris. It's a feature length film, but it gives great insights as to a great historical figure. And we put that on that week because the New Philharmonic is doing all the Beethoven piano concertos that weekend. And we thought, if you're interested in Beethoven, maybe you'll come watch the movie, That's which awesome. is a, a terrific movie. Uh, the week after that, my son, Robin Kesselman, who's a professional string bass player, is doing a whole recital of music for string bass. He'll be accompanied by Bill Burr, one of our staff pianists. And so that'll be a performance. He may talk a little bit, but he may just 
he may just play. And since he grew up in this area and he went on to a professional music career, that will have its own level of interest in that way. Um, that's the 13th of April. On the 20th, we have a guest pianist who's been here before, and she's going to play music written by Jewish and partially Jewish composers, particularly during the time of World War II and the time oh, wow. before World War II. And she has a whole, a whole thing she does in talking about what it would have been like to be a Jewish musician in Europe during the Nazi years. And so, wow. so at, then later that afternoon, she's doing a master class with our piano students, which is very exciting uh, to bring someone on who's going to be able to fulfill both mm -hmm. of those roles. And then the last weekend in April is a student recital. Uh, we do three of those every semester, one in the middle and two at the end. So uh, that's April. May we have um, Lindsay Kesselman, my other child. It's not <laughs> always like this, but it, it is this time. Um, and she's doing a whole concert of works that I've written for her, for voice and piano oh, nice. and cello. And so that will be um, the week that she's performing with the DuPage Chorale as a soloist, and she'll do a voice master class while she's here as well. And then the final week of the semester is a recital. We try, if we can, to incorporate those events that also attach to other musical events that are happening. If we bring a soprano soloist to sing with the DuPage Chorale, why would we not use her for a right. chamber music right. program and do a master class? And Carolyn Anger, who's the pianist who's coming in, in early uh, um, April, is coming to do a master class and to do this recital. And again, it's a way to enrich what happens in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And in the field of music especially, in, I think in all the arts, what happens in the classroom is a really important component, but it's only one component of what right. goes on. For these young artists to be exposed to composers and artists, they're learning to find their voice. They're learning to create and make their mark. And that's really how, you don't get famous always singing somebody else's work. You've got to right. create your own work. That's right. And even the sense of what everybody else is doing in the field. There are mm -hmm. composers and there are performers and there are educators and there are music therapists. And, and all of that gives a picture that helps someone not only find their voice, but figure out where they might fit in. Right. I find it really fascinating that we have so many people who come each week. We, we, we range somewhere between 30 and even as many as 150 people have come to these sessions. And we're a project that is really jointly sponsored by both the performance wing and the educational wing. And that teaches our students something else about how this world of the arts works, is that we do collaborate, we do talk to each other, and we find a way to, to make use of the resources that are around in a creative way. We started this whole series because we were on West Campus while the MAC was being renovated. Oh. And we realized that a lot of people forgot we had a music program, or we weren't as visible as we usually are. So we thought, well, we should do something. And we started with, I think, three sessions that first semester. And then people started coming. And so the next thing was, well, we'll have seven or eight. And then it was, I guess we better do this every week so that people That's know awesome. there's something going on. And it's become a wonderful new tradition for the Mac. So thank you. Great. Well, thank you. And thanks for letting us come backstage and see one. My pleasure. I urge you to come visit us at one of these Music Friday events on Fridays at noon at the Mac and the Chart Center. For more information, visit atthemac.org. And on the homepage, look for the box that says Music Fridays. We hope to see you soon. On Sunday, May 6th, don't miss the DuPage Chorale Spring Concert. The DuPage Community Band will perform on Monday, May 7th. On Tuesday, May 8th, don't miss COD's Chamber Orchestra. The Percussion Ensemble will take the stage on Wednesday, May 9th. On Thursday, May 10th, stop by the MAC at 2 p.m. to see the Guitar Ensemble perform, and then come back at 7.30 to see the Chamber Singers and Concert Choir concert. Finally, be sure to visit the MAC to see the Student Jazz Showcase on Friday, May 11th. For tickets, visit atthemac.org or you can call 630-942-4000.